So, <clears throat> welcome everyone to the AI Research Bytes. This series of short and informative talks showcase cutting edge research work from ServiceNow's AI re research team. The AI Research Bytes are open to all, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast paced AI research community. Today's session features a 15 minute talk from Isam Mahaji on his work on bringing to life uh, conversational business analytics with Agent Poirot and Inside Bench. It will be followed by a 10 minute Q&A. And as usual, please use uh, the Zoom Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Isam is a research scientist at ServiceNow Research and an adjunct professor at University of British Columbia. He's specializing in building AI solutions that require minimal human effort. And his research interests include natural language processing, computer vision, optimization, and pretty much everything AI. So the floor is yours, Isam. Thanks, thanks, Fanny. Thank you very much. Um, before I start, I'm just going to show the slide, which highlights that all the information I'm presenting here is to the best of our knowledge uh, today. And I will be talking about Inside Bench, a benchmark. We've been working um, uh, with uh, over the last uh, at least six months, and it's uh, for evaluating end-to-end -end data analytics. And the first thing we will cover is uh, how we're going to talk about how to perform end-to-end -end data analytics with LLM agents and how to effectively evaluate uh, such agents. So let's look at uh, the whole data analytics process. So let's say we have a Steve, a uh, data analyst, who uh, whose persona is uh, a finance department manager, and uh, he's interested in the key performance indicator of mean time to resolution. So he wants to like really reduce that as much as possible. And for this particular data analytics process, he wants to find ways to resolution uh, to uh, to reduce resolution times. So what can he do? So first, he, he can go through the data sets in the, the same organization and uh, acquire them, and which could be uh, incident logs, customer feedback, and so on. So when he examines that data, he will try to find trends and insights. But one thing to be careful of is that not every insight is useful. You might end up with a boring insight. For example, let's say the time to resolution to resolve an incident is uniform across departments. That's not very interesting. Uh, we call it a boring insight. And uh, there's nothing much to do there. What we want is uh, something interesting, something that uh, um, encourages us to make decisions. For example, here, uh, we, and we call it insight flag. So here, uh, what we see here, let's say we have this a very high time to resolution for the finance department on June compared to all other departments. So that's an interesting insight about what's happening in the particular month for that particular department. So now he can make or recommend informed uh, decisions. So it could be optimized staffing for the finance department on June. So this is the, uh, the, the process here. But in order to find that inside flag, uh, it requires a lot of human effort and a lot of domain expertise. You need to know a lot about incident management, a lot about data analysis, and so on. Uh, and uh, the reason why is because in order for Steve to uh, get that insight flag, he needs to, one of the ways to do a data analytics is to follow this uh, three-step process. First, you ask a question, a very direct question. Let's say, how does time to resolution differ across departments? And then you write code that generates a plot. And then you interpret the results. And then you do that k times or however many times until you find a very interesting insight. And then you re recommend a decision. Uh, even with the current copilot, co so the current copilots are very limited to single step code completion. So even if Steve had a copilot, maybe he will just need to ask questions and interpret results. So the writing the code part can be done by the copilot. But Asking question interpreting results is also very difficult and requires a lot of domain uh, domain expertise and human effort. So it doesn't solve, uh, doesn't address this uh, sufficiently. Not good enough. So we introduce Agent Poirot and uh, 
it's, an, uh, it's, one, it's a part of our work. It's an island based agent for end-to-end -end data analytics. End-to-end -end means we're going to do all the three stages. So why do we call it Poirot? Poirot is based on this fictional Belgian detective created by the British writer Agatha Christie. So while Poirot actually solves murders, uh, we see an analogy here. So for Poirot to solve murders, he needs to ask questions, answers them, and follows up until he finds who the murderer is. In our case, we need to find the inside flag. So Agent Poirot will uh, take as input the set of tables, uh, like incident logs and customer feedback. And then you can give it metadata, which is optional, like the persona, the KPI, and the goal. But the more you, the more precise you are in your metadata, the better the agent will perform, or, or data analyst, which makes sense, because you want to get very relevant insights. And then Agent Paul can uh, do the, th the three-step uh, data analytics process. You can repeat them k times, or until there are no more interesting questions to ask. So what we have is that we, uh, we have follow-up questions, and we score them. And if the questions are not interesting enough, we can just stop, you know? And then uh, all these uh, interpretations of the results, they're aggregated to get the inside flag and recommend a decision. So the features here is uh, that it supports multi-table. This is very useful, especially in organizations where you have many different tables scattered around. You want to be able to find trends when you collect or by analyzing multiple tables at once. Goals and KPIs can be inferred. So this is very useful because uh, there are a lot of organizations that have a lot of data that they have no idea what they are about, really. So just running Agent Poirot on them offline, for example, and see what comes up, you might find some interesting uh, insights. And it's also very good at efficiently ranking extracted insights. It gives you the best insights at the top so that you don't waste time on less interesting insights. In terms of implementation details, we use GPT-40 or different variations of GPT, but we also do open source like Llama 3. Doesn't require any training. Uh, I mean, like fine tuning. And each step that we showed of the pipeline uh, is a prompt, it's prompt based, and uh, it's grounded on the metadata. We also have uh, uh, the code online, so you can tr uh, try Agent Poirot by going to this Google Colab and you can test it on any CSV file or data set that you like. So from the looks of it, Asian power is great, but how do we know that it is actually good? You know, we need a reliable benchmark. The problem is that existing benchmarks are not really suitable. Existing ones that evaluate on single step code completion, not the, the whole end-to-end -end data analytics. And the reason why they don't exist is because it's very challenging to make such a benchmark. Because how do you know what is a good insight? For for one person, a good in, uh, an insight can be good, but it could be terrible for another, and vice versa, right? So how can we make sure it's a good insight? How do we ensure that the metadata is precise? It needs to be precise enough uh, so that we can acquire the most relevant insights. How do we know that? How do we ensure that the relevant that that the data is relevant to real life applications? And also, when you're evaluating, the agents are predicting insights. And you have, let's say, the ground truth insights. How do you match? How do you make sure that the two match? Because the, 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 the two are in free form text. And insights can be written in many different ways, even though they entail the same thing. So how do we match them without any human involvement? So first, to address the part about uh, um, having data from real life applications, we use the ServiceNow platform. Uh, ServiceNow has uh, is a is a comprehensive platform on uh, that focuses on business operations and workflows, and it allows us to generate synthetic tabular data that mimics real life enterprise data. And it's used by tens of millions of users. So generating data from here is relevant to many many people around the world. So what are the features of uh, Inside Bench? Uh, we uh, in our work. We have uh, synthesized 31 tabular data sets from ServiceNow platform. And we have three, five distinct themes. Like we have the user management, the inventory management, incidents management, finance management, and so on. And we can add more later on. It's a fully automated evaluation. So there's no human effort involved, which is really good because that's always costly. And it's also representative of real life business analytics, which means it could be useful for a lot of uh, organizations. Uh, here we can show you just a brief overview of how the data set look, uh, looks like. So we have 
in this benchmark, we have like hardware incident data set, incident resolution time data set, incident category trends over time data set, and so on. And each of these data sets are carefully been built. Uh, so for example, here, an example, uh, insights from incident management category. So what is the trend in time to resolution across categories? And for each of them, we provide a plot. So for example, here, there's like a, this plot that shows that there's a very interesting correlation at different time periods. So we have all these different insights and questions uh, aggregated for each data set. But in order to get very, very good uh, data set and very good uh, insights, uh, we need a very careful data collection process that we carefully designed. So in my, uh, and, the, the way, and the way it's done is we, we need to have an annotator, of course. So let's assume here we have Steve, the annotator. And then uh, we, we hire Steve because he's an expert, let's say, in, instant, uh, in incident management. Uh, he's also an expert in data manipulation analysis. So the first step, what he does is that he needs to define the metadata. First, we need to get some relevant tables, get two or, or three tables that uh, are interesting from, from the, let's say, the ServiceNow platform. Then you have, need to define the persona, the KPIs, and the goal as precisely as possible. This is very, very important because the more precise you are in those uh, uh, values of the metadata, the more we can argue that the, ins that the, that the insights that exist are, um, are, the, are, are the most interesting ones so that we don't have ambiguity in what kind of insights we should extract. And then the second step is planting an insight flag. So now you have a table. The table potentially has no interesting insights at all, just a boring table. The annotator, or Steve here, needs to plant a highly discoverable insight flag into the data table. For example, and it needs to make it highly discoverable. This is also very important. For example, there's time to resolution that increases over time. So make that uh, insight very strong in the data so that it, it shouldn't be missed by any agent uh, that's tested on this data. And then determine what kind of action that needs to be taking based on the insight. For example, provide trainings for the new software so that you reduce time to resolution. And then in step three, in step three, after you plan to the insight, go a few steps back and now perform a complete end-to-end -end data analytics. Open a Jupyter notebook and then follow this process. Write a series of questions, uh, code, and result interpretation based on the metadata, and then repeat k times, maybe three to five times, until you get the insight flag that you planted. And uh, there's another constraint is that each question has to have one plot, because that makes things a lot easier to evaluate. So now we have an insight flag, and we have the, all, the, all the questions needed to get into that insight flag. So how do we evaluate? We use uh, LAMA3 eval which evaluates whether the predicted insights, so let's say an agent predicts an insight for a data set, and we need to see if it matches with the ground truth insights, the flag, uh, the planted insight. And, and we do that with respect to factuality, consistency, and coherence. So uh, LAMA3 eval is based on GEVAL, which is a published work in MNLP 2023, and it's very good at doing this. So imagine the ground truth insight is there's higher success rates for critical and high priority goals within the IT department. And the predicted insights is the data set reveals a trend where projects with high and critical uh, levels generally have higher completion. So they're very similar insights, except written in very different ways. So LAMA3 eval is able to give this a very high score. The score is between 0 and 1. So, so this is good. We also have uh, some uh, quantitative results here. So for incident management, uh, we showed some LAMA eval uh, three results. So these are different backends, 3.5, 4, 4.0, and LAMA3. And what, what I want to highlight here is that, uh, well, LAMA3 slightly outperforms 3.5. Uh, sometimes that's expected. But one way to improve it is to fine tune it. So this is another thing that we are, we're looking for to the capability to fine tune it so they do better data analytics. But also I want to highlight that this is a very nice quality check for our data set because of course, of course, better backends should perform better performance. But if the data set had some weird artifacts, that might not be the case. So it's nice that we don't have such artifacts and there's like a nice correlation between the backend strength and the, the, the performance. 
So for closing remarks, this concludes our presentation, but uh, we showed that data analytics is useful because it allows us to make data-driven informed decisions. Uh, however, it takes a lot of human efforts and domain expertise. Uh, we showed how we could use LLM-based agents, but existing agents focus on single-step code completion, whereas Asian Palo can perform the end-to-end -end analytics. Also, um, when it comes to evaluating agents, existing benchmarks are not suitable for end-to-end, -end, but inside benchmark is very carefully designed that allows us to effectively evaluate such agents. So uh, final slide, uh, feel free to try Agent Poirot on your data sets uh, through this QR code. You can also uh, test a custom agent on Inside Bench. You can just go to our GitHub and then uh, create a custom agent and just run it on the benchmark. And then also we have open positions, like uh, we're looking for collaborators to join our team. Uh, we have a lot of cool things uh, we could do from here now on. And I want to thank all our uh, collaborators uh, for this work. Thank you very much.